Hey everyone! So, it just occurred to me that I'm totally a day behind. Uh, for some reason all day yesterday I thought it was Tuesday. Which is why I gave you guys a trivia Tuesday. Oops. Now, if Wordplay Wednesday weren't so important for everything going on this month, I would just skip it. But, we're gonna do Wordplay Wednesday this morning, and then I'll give you your throwback Thursday this evening, so expect two posts. Because <laughs> I'm all off. I hate holidays, guys. They do this to me. They make my brain hurt. Anyway, let's talk about Wordplay Wednesday. So, we're going to talk about the word formation, because I'm going to be using it all month. It's a word that's commonly used by geologists and paleontologists all the time to describe the rocks. Um, so a formation is a body of rocks having a consistent set of physical characteristics that distinguish it from the adjacent rock. For example, we have these two rocks here. So this is from Irish Canyon. It's near one of the dig sites that I work at in northwestern Colorado. So we have this deep red rock and then a paler rock above that. So those are two separate formations. So the bottom one is the Precambrian aged Lador formation and the one above it is the Mississippian aged Madison limestone. So we use those formation names to differentiate between different types of rocks. And formations should be distinguishable um, physically like this. If they're not, it's probably not a good match. So that's the basis for that. Um, the way we determine formations is through lithology. So lithology is the chemical and mineral compositions, the texture, the color, the primary depositional structures, fossils, and other organics like coal, that kind of thing. So if I were to talk about the Mississippian limestone, I would be able to say that it is a limestone, some minor dolomites. That chemical composition is CaCO3, so calcium carbonate. The texture is limestone is very very fine grain you can't see it with the naked eye it's generally a, like a pale tan to a gray color um, it doesn't always have depositional structures in it because of the way lime, limestone is a chemical rock so we don't generally have those but they're usually plumb full of fossils madison limestone is plumb full you'll find brachiopods you'll find bryozoans you'll find corals you'll find sponges you'll find um echinoderms all kinds of things in it so those fossils are a really good indicator of our madison limestone we also need to be able to delineate these formations at the scale of geologic mapping to a region so this is a geologic map of Montana. Everything you see on here is a formation that is seen on the surface. So if you can't do it on a surface map like this, um, it's not a formation. Um, if you can put it onto a regional map and it's smaller, it might be a member of a formation. But that's a whole other, <laughs> whole other thing. But this is kind of the scale we need to be able to do it at. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're very thick. So our formations can range anywhere from less than a meter to several thousand meters thick. I mean, Madison limestone is several thousand meters thick, especially um, up in our western mountains in Montana. I mean, they make up pretty much the entire mountain range out there. Just insane to think about. But in other places, it's just not very thick. And part of that's just how how and where rock got deposited. I mean, your Madison limestone is not going to be very thick if you're transitioning onto your beach. Because your limestone is going to be in your ocean. That's just how that goes. And formations pinch out. It's just, you know, a naturally occurring thing. 
Now, formations are typically named after a permanent natural or artificial feature. For example, our Morrison Formation is named after Morrison, Colorado. So this is a picture of Morrison, Colorado, incidentally, with the Morrison Formation in the background. So you can see that the type section is right by the place where it was named. Um, the Navajo Sandstone was named for the Navajo Nation where huge amounts of this sandstone is found. I mean, it's all over their, um, their land, their reservation and everything. So they got to name it after that. Um, trying to think of like a physical feature. Uh, la, 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 la. Madison Limestone may have been named after the Madison River in Montana. I'm not entirely sure. But it could be reasonable. Because <laughs> the Madison River does follow loads of Madison limestone. So, you know. Anyway. Um, so, here's a picture of the Morrison Formation um, over where my dig site Evil Tree Bone Bed is. And you can look at it and see that this formation it's composed of mudstone, sandstone, siltstone, and limestone. You can definitely tell there's mudstone in here just because of all the, the sloping nature of this hillside here. Um, but when you get close, there are limest er, limestone lenses and there's um, sandstone. Uh, there's a sandstone layer in there. The formation itself is usually in an array of colors. It's generally light gray, greenish gray, or red, but it also has some maroon, straight up green. Um, I haven't seen any other colors in there, but yeah. Um, and to give you an idea, so this is in northwestern Colorado. It's more gray. That bright red is also part of the Morrison Formation. There's a bottom layer there that's actually a white sandstone. You can't really see from here. Bad angle. It's on the other side of the hill. So it goes you know, white, red, gray, sort of greenish gray into these sort of maroons and grays before it transitions into the Cedar Mountain Formation. Now here's a picture I took out in the San Rafael Swell of Utah. This is still the Morrison Formation. This is specifically the Brushy Basin member. Um, and I can't make a picture any bigger but you can see that it's still got that variegated mudstones so it's red it's in grays these are a little brighter out here the iron has been more oxidized it's drier out here than out at evil tree but you can see that they're still very very similar you can still identify it as morrison formation um the morrison formation is up to 200 meters thick at its thickest and it's plumb full of dinosaur bones um, petrified wood, ash, and even uranium. So I'll just show you a few pictures that I've taken of the various things you can see. So here we have a diplodocid dorsal vertebrae. You can tell because it has that sort of forked uh, neural spine at the top. This is found in the brushy basin member. This was in the San Rafael swell. It's one of our identifying features. Dinosaur bones, specifically sauropods. This is a vertebral column. It's the cervicals or neck vertebrae of some smaller dinosaur. We're still working on pulling it out of the rock. Um, but I found this at the evil tree bone bed. This one's in the sandstone layer. So that's fun. And then this last bone I'm going to show you. This is from a nearby evil tree from the Morrison Formation. This is a Diplodocus leg that's actually showing signs of radioactivity, so it does have uranium in it. Not enough to make anybody ill, but our little Geiger counter does read the radioactivity in it, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's how you identify formations, and specifically the Morrison formation. Hope you guys learned something new, and I will see you this evening for actual Throwback Thursday. <laughs>